Sup guys, Troy here. Today we are going to be talking about carterine, otherwise known as GW501516. Before I assess carterine's cancer risk, I want to talk about its mechanism of action. GW501516, carterine, is a PPAR delta agonist. So PPAR delta is a nuclear receptor which is activated after exercise. So when we exercise, we are activating both AMP kinase and PPAR delta. And this is how we are augmenting our aerobic capacity during exercise. So what happens in the cell after the PPAR delta receptor is activated is that our glucose preference changes over into fat. So we're no longer burning carbohydrates as a fuel source, we're burning fats as a fuel source. This change in energy preference causes an increase in cardio performance, especially activities over three minutes long. And this is gonna be demonstrated by this diagram. In this diagram, there is the PPAR delta and the RXR receptor in the nucleus of the cell, which have to combine to exert their effects on all of the target organs. So in the liver, we increase lipogenesis so that's fat creation. We reduce glucose output, likely through glucagon. In adipocytes, so fat cells, we increase fatty acid oxidation, increase our energy expenditure through uncoupling proteins, so we become less energy efficient, and we're burning more fuel for the same exercise. And it reduces our fatness. In muscle cells, it increases our oxidative metabolism, increases energy expenditure, reduces lipotoxicity, and controls our fiber type switch. So we're switching from type two fibers to type one fibers. So this could impair your hypertrophy response during a massing phase. In our macrophages, it controls fatty acid metabolism and suppresses inflammation. This is, can have a profound impact on our immune response as well. In short, we get higher HDL, lower LDL, increased insulin sensitivity, and better cardio performance. In this diagram, we're gonna look at the phosphogen system, glycolytic system, and oxidative system to translate what this means for us. So in the first 10 seconds of exercise, we're using our phosphogen system. So this is our quickest way to get ATP. So creatine, this donates energy from this system, from the phosphogen system for the first five to 10 seconds of exercise. Whereas fast glycolysis, that's the energy from our, our muscle glycogen and our liver glycogen, which is supplying the energy we need to complete the set, whether it be leg press, bench press, any exercise that's lasting 15 to 30 seconds. As the duration of exercise increases, our ability to get the energy sufficient enough for that exercise diminishes, and then we need to transfer over into our oxidative capabilities. So this is burning fat for energy. In this case, carterine is allowing us that switch over faster and allowing a greater oxidative capabilities of our cells. So our oxidative metabolism can take over quicker and we're able to burn more fat for those long duration exercises. Anything over three minutes, you're gonna notice greatly enhanced stamina. When talking about the cancer risk, a lot of the arguments revolve around that mice have a higher rate incidence of cancer than humans, and therefore studying the cancer in mice will not translate over into humans. So initially there were studies on mice that found, mice and rats that found that there was an increased risk of cancer after carterine. So is it because they don't, that they have a higher risk of cancer? Is that why they're getting cancer? The second argument made is that the dose that we are giving these mice of carterine is not representative of what a human dose would be. However, Derek for More Plates, More Dates, he looked at the study and he converted the animal dose into the human dose and found that it was roughly one and a half to two times what a normal person would use during their carterine run. So this means that they're using right around 40 to 50 milligrams. Changing those doses into human doses we can infer that it might be slightly above what we would take, but not so much out of the ballpark that it's just ridiculous. The third argument is that, okay, we're giving these mice or rats carterine 
for 66 years of their life or three fourths of their life or very long durations of their life. And that's why they're getting cancer. And I want to explore these ideas. Contrary to popular belief in the fitness industry, there's not only two studies on the cancer risk in mice or rats to support the cancer risk that carterine has. When we look at the studies, one specific study comes to mind is the cancer study in which they gave, they compared a wild type mouse to a wild type mouse that's given GW to a PPAR delta overexpression mouse and a mouse that has a PPAR delta overexpression given GW over time. And what they found was that with the increasing expression of PPAR delta, that there's an increasing occurrence of cancer. In the wild type mouse on the top is shown over time that there's a gradual increase in cancer noted by the purple clusters in the image. But once they're given GW, the rate of cancer shown by the purple clusters increases greatly. And in the PPAR delta overexpression mouse, it increases even more. And in the bottom, finally, PPAR delta overexpression with GW causes uncontrollable cancer. This is a great opportunity to show that the wild type mouse without carterine has a far lower incidence of cancer. But once carterine is introduced into the picture, there's an ever increasing rate of cancer development, which is dependent on how much carterine we're giving them or how much PPAR delta is overexpressed. Okay. So you could say that, oh, well, cancer studies on mice don't matter because they have a higher incidence of cancer. They're going to get cancer faster. And because it's given over five months, which equates to 17 years of their life, that this isn't a valid model, that I'm an athlete, that I'm only going to use it for two months and I'm going to come off and nothing's going to happen. Okay. Well, let's look into another study where we're using cell lines. So in this study, we're using thyroid cell lines. So in a Petri dish, cultures of primary thyroid cells were treated with a synthetic PPAR agonist, GW501516, a surrogate for natural PPAR lipid ligand. Thyroid cell numbers increased in a dose-dependent manner in response to increasing concentrations of GW501516, as seen on the right in the diagram, that PPAR delta with GW501516 increase the rate of cancer in thyroid cells, whereas the knockout of PPAR delta decreased the risk of cancer greatly in thyroid cells. In addition to human thyroid cells, human breast cancer cells have also been studied for carterine's cancer risk. And what has been found is that in low glucose situations, where normal cancer cells would die, cancer cells treated with GW501516 had greater survivability. In addition to cell line studies, there's mechanistic data that supports the fact that carterine causes cancer. In the diagram, PPAR delta agonist, GW501516, increases GLUT1 and SLC1-A5. When these are expressed, it increases the influx of glutamine and glucose into cancer cells. This then causes growth of cancer cells. Therefore, we can say that through carterine's mechanism of action, it increases the rate of cancer growth. To that same point, there was another study that showed that carterine increased COX-2 enzyme expression in cancer cells. And this increases inflammatory response in cancer cells, which causes a feed forward reaction, increasing cancer growth. So there's not only one, but two mechanistic data that supports the fact that carterine causes cancer. If you are serious about inhibiting your cancer risk, then you should definitely consider not taking carterine. Now, what are some ways around the risk of carterine? Well, one study looked at the use of metformin. So as mentioned previously, SGLT-A5 and GLUT1 receptor act as a vacuum to bring nutrients into the cancer cell. When GW501516 or carterine is given with metformin, there's a decrease in GLUT1 and SLC1A5 expression. And this 
causes a decrease in cancer growth. So if you're going to be taking carterine, you need to be taking proactive drugs, which decrease the cancer risk. Furthermore, we can look at chlorogenic acid. In the study, chlorogenic acid was being put up against indomethacin, a COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitor. As mentioned previously, COX-2 enzyme is responsible for an increase in prostaglandin production, which then increases cancer cell growth. In this study, when they're given chlorogenic acid at 100 milligrams per day, the chlorogenic acid decreased the carcinogenic effects and inflammatory effects. There was a decrease in COX-2 in inflamed skin and kidney in the groups of rats that received either indomethacin or 100 milligrams a day of chlorogenic acid. So chlorogenic acid is a supplement that is found in green bean coffee extract. So if you're looking for something like this, that's where you'd find it. Furthermore, chlorogenic acid induced AMP kinase activation via promoting the rise of CAMKKB expression in the hep G2 hepatoma cells. Some studies suggested that chlorogenic acid treatment increase the levels of adiponectin and adiponectin can act as a key activator of the AMP kinase pathway. So what does this mean in English? <laughs> what this means is that anything that activates AMP kinase decreases the risk of cancer. That's why chlorogenic acid and metformin both decrease the risk of cancer development, especially when taking carterine. Corzolic acid much like chlorogenic acid, is a triterpene compound which has many studies backing its efficacy in reducing cancer risk and diabetes risk. This study looks at the mRNA levels of TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, I, NOS, COX-2, and NF-kappa B. And what they found was that when rats were treated with an inflammatory product, that corazolic acid significantly reduced the expression of the above indicators. Our results suggest that the inhibition of TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, INOS, COX-2, and NF-kappa-B by corazolic acid can greatly decrease inflammatory activity. It's been shown in other studies that it has many other factors that decreases the risk of cancer by decreasing reactive oxygen species, by increasing AMK, by decreasing IRAC-1, and by decreasing NF-kappa-B, that corazolic acid is able to greatly decrease the risk of cancer. So all the bodybuilders thinking of taking this, you really got to take into consideration the risk that is coming your way. Simply saying, well, my friend took it for two weeks and he didn't get cancer is not a valid excuse. Cancer is something that takes a long time to happen. It doesn't happen over two weeks. It doesn't happen over two, four weeks. It's something that is cumulative okay, you could smoke for two weeks and you might not get cancer. Maybe you smoke for four weeks, take two months off, smoke for another four weeks, and maybe it'll just take longer for you to get cancer. In addition, there's going to be no ethical study on carterine. The prospective study in order to assess its cancer risk in humans would take far too long. It might take 20, 30 years in order to look into the cancer risk that it could we could potentially have in humans. So that's why we're leaning on the animal models, the cell line models, the mechanistic models, knockout, overexpression of PPA or delta to give us the possible effects that we could see in ourselves, whether we're going to see cancer or not. No long-term study is going to look into carterine because there's too many ethical issues with giving a known carcinogen mechanistically to humans for a long period of time. Another common thing I hear is, well, they didn't do this in bodybuilders, therefore I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about these studies that are done in animals or cell lines. I'm not a cell line. I'm not I'm not a mouse, so therefore I'm not going to worry. Oh, well, did you know they also didn't do cancer studies? of smoking in bodybuilders, but do you need to smoke to find out whether cancer is caused by smoking or not? No, we all understand that cancer is caused by smoking, so we don't do it. We don't need to know whether our lifestyle is going to change our cancer risk. We know that there's an increased cancer risk, so by taking that out of the equation, we're minimizing it. In the absence of human studies, it would be prudent to avoid carterine through PPAR overexpression or PPAR agonism, 
via GW501516, there's increased cancer risk. However, when PPAR delta is knocked out, in most models, there's a decreased cancer risk. So the overwhelming majority of data is showing that PPAR delta has a clear role in cancer. Now, if you want to take that risk on yourself by taking carterine, then it'd be prudent to take something to inhibit your risk. So much like any risk, you need to do risk mitigation, either through metformin, chlorogenic acid, or corazolic acid to decrease your risk of getting cancer. So if you plan on taking this for months on end, I would say it'd be very smart to take some sort of anti-carcinogenic supplement alongside it. So therefore, there's a decreased risk and that you can feel a little bit better about the risk that you're taking when you take carterine. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to head on out. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. I want you guys to subscribe, like the video. See you in the next one.